advertise that that in development? We shot it. We got like a couple of more scenes to shoot in LA. We're taking a break. We'll shoot that later. <laughs> but yeah, we shot it and it's maybe probably towards the end of the year. And who do we have starring in it? Another familiar name. Yeah, Kimberly Elise and then Randall Battenkoff and Amma is back. And then we went for Nollywood's biggest, Omotala. Yes. Um, is, is it a conscious, conscious decision of yours to use at least one known African American or, mm. you know? Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a businesswoman and then I'm an artist, right? My art side writes the script and then cast was real. But then whilst I'm casting, I'm wearing two hats. You know, you always have to cast for the market. You know, you're making a black film, a black African film. When the bigger market does not want to see a black African film about pretty women driving nice cars and trying to live good lives, they want to see them running away from being raped, you know, by a horde of soldiers. So what I do is I try to secure territories because if anything happens and then we only end up in art house cinemas and you're not able to recoup your budget, you can always go to Amatala's territory or Ama's territory or Kimberly's territory, you know, and still, you know, even big studio films cast the same. You always have to cast across board, you know, Germany, UK, this, that, so that you can have a market, you can have find buyers in different places. So. The art of it is there, but then at the end of the day, it is business as well. Right? That's why we're here, selling. <laughs> um, probably December. We, yeah, probably we're ta we're targeting Toronto, but we're behind. We're way behind. So December. Actually, ties that bind is my last film in Ghana. We're moving on. You know, yeah, I. I I don't think I want to be blocked in and stereotyped as, oh, the African filmmaker. I'm a filmmaker, no associations, you know, just independent filmmaker. So Ties That Wind is going to be our last project in Ghana. Um, we're developing something right now which might shoot in the Honduras. Yes. It was supposed to be a mining movie in Burkina Faso, but then the budget for that is a little huge. So because I, my goal is to make social issue films, even if I leave Ghana, I'm still going to be making movies about social issues. I have an anthropology background, so I like to blend that as well, you know. So definitely the social issue aspect of it is going to be there. And I also like to make movies where my characters are giving back to the society. I like to build characters who are giving back, like Harvey's a teacher. In, Kim, in, in Ties and Vine, Kimberly, uh, Amma is a caregiver. Kimberly is trying to help. You know, everybody, everybody's contributing something somehow to the society. I like to build characters like that. You know, there's a script that we've been developing, which is set in, you know, civil rights time. You know in America, where we're developing it, but I'm like, oh my goodness, shooting this is going to be, <laughs> it's going to be very expensive. It's big, it's big. It's a very interesting story, but it's, it's huge. It's very huge. So that one, and then, you know, a couple of others, we decided to like put aside and then do like more small budgets, you know, make higher, you know, go steady. Go from the 1.5 to the 5 to the 10s and then, you know, Gradually, we will we'll be rolling with the funds. <laughs> it's, it's, it's sort of like 50-50. And I say 50-50 because most of the people that are here that I'm going to are people that I've known over the years. So they're not going to see me and say no. They'll tell you, hmm, okay, I'll take this territory, I'll take this territory. But Girl, it's hard to sell black movies. <laughs> and then when you go to people who are not familiar, you're like, wow. It's very, I'm not sure who I'll give this to. It's a black movie. You know, then you start to pitch. Then like, well, Jimmy was in Heroes. And then you now start to like dredge up all the movies he's been in. They're like, oh, I think I remember him. Well, I think there's something I can do with this. 
maybe television they suddenly they start oh heroes okay television well maybe the people who watch fat girls and then they start basing their statistics on that you know one reason we try to always put in at least one familiar face you that makes it a little bit more universal and sellable you know but it's always it's hard to sell everybody even from friends it's hard to sell a black girl well this is not something we can package oh it's hard to sell a black girl and you're like okay so where are all the black people who watch movies you can't find a way of reaching out to the black people who watch movies if if it means that black people have to watch black movies and white people have to watch white movies if that is what the world wants us to be okay fine black people watch movies take it to the black people who watch movies you know? Do you think a lot of it has to do with the kind of the type of stories you're telling as well? If you were telling different types of stories, do you think even with a black cast, do you think it would be easier? I well, maybe, 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 maybe if you're telling a couple of, forgive me, ghetto, where you stereotype black people and make them look illiterate and uncivilized, maybe, maybe, because I've seen a couple of black comedies when I'm like. Oh my goodness, that is not African Americans. That is not African. It's like they want you to bring to them, you know, some. Yeah, but that, that don't. That's not them. And African Americans are definitely not chitlin eating people. That you want to always watch chitlin eating movies about black people, you know. Every black people watch white movies. White, white people watch black movies, but then I do not know whether the, the people in charge sitting at the desk, the, the decks drinking their little mugs of espresso and cappuccino just do not want to make the effort and put in the time of reaching out to audience, which at the end of the day is going to bring you money. After all, your percentage is higher than mine, you know, but... I don't know what it is. There's, I think there's some kind of machine driving the industry that simply is refusing to grind stuff that is for black people or that is by black people, you know. And is it about something about not trying, going with the, what's tried and tested? So it's like I, yes, 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 the, yeah, exactly. And then the funny thing is, when somebody struggles to try and test it and it's successful, then they jump on it. What stops you from being the one to experiment? So, so you, 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 as a black filmmaker uh, uh, producer, you're really having to set the, 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 the tone. Exactly. Set, set, set the, the tone. Set the pace yourself. Like what uh, the Abu Follow is doing. you got to try and do it yourself because it becomes difficult when you're entrusted to people to do it for you. It's difficult. If you're put in a place of position and you have influence, take a chance, take a risk. We, I took a risk making this with an all African cast with that kind of money that I would never make back in Ghana. But then I feel good that I took that risk. You know, if you don't set the pace, who are you expecting to come and set the pace for you? If you do it and it works, you keep your position, you make a big deal. I think I'm black movies to do. What I will do is to do like a screening and invite only buyers in every city, in every country, you know, invite buyers, like try and pitch them, sit with them and, and find a publicist and a marketer and sit with them and map out strategies that, okay, listen, this is what we can do here. This is what we can do here. This is what we can do here. We will bring the PNA budget ourselves. This is what we can do here. This is what we can do here. A community, this, a community, that, sensitize the community. Once you do it two, three times, people get to know. You know, like we're trying to get Lincoln on board. If we're doing a screening in the theater and they pack a brand new Lincoln car in the theater, you know, things like We're that. very grateful to people like Shadow and Act. You know, you have set a pace too. Right now, everybody's running to Shadow and Act to read about what's going on in Africa. That's, I mean, we're not, we don't always go around having, you know, waging war. You know, we love fashion, we love food. We help each other. We help each other out, you know. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.